All right, hello, hello everyone. This is a, a pick a pile or a pick a mini brand for your message. I have three different piles of different cards, uh, mermaids and water energy. And these ones, the Healing Waters Oracle. Uh, there is also uh, some tarot, potentially even some sacred geometry in here, okay? Um, but first and foremost, I have some more of these little fun mini brands. So I think this is a fun way of your choosing your selection. So as I open this up really quickly, and you're welcome to go to the comments. I'm going to timestamp that there if you just want to jump in and see where you're guided. So with these different mini brands, so this comes with five, but I'm only going to take three out of the pack, right? This one is uh, the series four mini brands. Um, so it could be that this product item, food item, whatever it is, is something you have that you, you use or a person you're thinking of. Um, I was also getting that it could actually be something maybe that even some, like if it's a foodie item, like something they don't like, <laughs> I know that's interesting, but whatever. And sometimes you could get a different message uh, regarding different people in your life, uh, as well as yourself, right? So thank you guys all so much. Um, I decided before I went into the Ju July monthly messages, I wanted to finish up these, um, pick a card, uh, or pick a pile, pick the pick uh, mystery piles uh, before I go to the full uh, messages for July's monthly. So whenever you do get it, maybe um, check out your monthly. Maybe it's already uploaded. You can also check out your rising sign, moon sign. I throw in different zodiac signs and times and dates. And I, I saw actually uh, Aries energy, 326 and 329 in specific. I saw Virgo, 907, uh, Cancer sign two, um, 72 and 73, 7273. Those are just, um, oh, and Sagittarian, 1211. Okay, so these ones are all blue. I'm just gonna pull off, set them there. See, they're a mystery. All of these are mysteries. I do know what type of cards are in play, but I do not know what is in there. Okay, and I'm gonna save these other ones for another one. Uh, I enjoy doing these in, in the between times. This is just something new I've been doing for 2024. I don't know if I'll continue doing this moving forward into 2025. We are like halfway through the year. That's so crazy, right? Okay, I'm gonna start by opening up. So pile number one, uh, let's see what your mini brand is. Okay, what, I don't even know what this is. Hoisin duck, oh it's, Bail buns. Okay, I know what these are. Okay, it's Sue. It's Sue Hoisin Duck Bail buns. So these are like those like steam fluffy things with like, you know, the meat feeling. Steamed buns with delicious feeling. 60 cents in the microwave. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> the pile number one. Uh, that's so funny that I say even something that that they might not like or you don't like even, right? Um, interesting, or who it makes you remind you of. If this doesn't, you've never had this or don't, it doesn't make you think of anyone, then uh, yeah, uh, not for you, right? So that's not your pile. So pile number one, the hoisin. Hoisin is really yummy flavor though. Duck, oh, <laughs> bail buns. Okay, there's six in a pack. Let's see what number two is. That is weird. Um, That's the weirdest one I've gotten so far, I have to say. Okay, oh, what's this? We got stickers in here. It looks like it's a cell phone. I feel like you got a cell phone. What is this? A cell phone? I'm trying to see. Is this a cell phone? Look, there's like, oh, a credit card. Mini Brands Corporate a corporate credit card and of course you can't really see what the name is from for some reason I mean this looks like a MasterCard if I was gonna say but it's a gold card so credit card okay the credit card right there um what else is this oh this is the credit card machine oh I see okay that's this is some interesting so taking um, payments um, putting your credit card in the payment machine okay that's different. I don't even know how to, I'm just gonna be like, pick a mini brand, cause I don't even, okay, so there must be, and there's a sticker in there too. Yeah, so you put it on, this is like for typing in your pen and stuff, and like, like the touch 
setting it on there, putting it in the slot to uh, pay at the grocery store. So if you always use card, I mean, who does it? But that it says, looks like this is a corporate card. Okay, that's uh, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna set that off to the side. That's weird. A little mini credit card though. I've seen little things of cash before. Okay, now let's see what number three is. And then I will jump into the messages. An OxyClean. I feel like we've gotten this before. Um, so when I do get repeats when I do this, I, I will say um, there might be a connection with the other message with the OxyClean. So this is even laundry stuff, right? Um, this is a stain removal laundry and more squirting it on the stain before you wash it the spray so this is about laundry cleaning huh this one gonna be weird i don't even know which one i would pick probably the credit card right <laughs> but this is also spending money remember that but you, we all have to right hmm okay interesting so now here's the weird thing i'm just gonna share that i'm gonna personally do um to get all the way down to you know the pick a pick an item um i'm gonna click my channel probably and i'm gonna scroll down and find the oxyclean because i want to see what i said in that message and see how it might correlate to this one okay hmm so keeping the laundry clean paying for it and groceries okay so we're gonna start with the the first one though with the ho hoisin duck so uh, like I said, check the comments. I'm in a timestamp. So number three and the OxyClean, the laundry stuff. Okay, that's number three. And number two is the credit card and the credit card machine. Okay, payment. And let's start with Hoisin Duck. All right, at 656. So if you chose pile number one in the Hoisin Duck bail buns, uh, let's see what your mermaid messages are. Okay, first, I'm gonna just flip them over this way. A turbulence, okay. The mind is a murky in rough waters. So, turbulence even in waters. So this is even about your mind, right? Um, lots going on in your head. Better duck. No, I'm just kidding. So, I wanna see, this is new. Uh, I haven't used these Healing Waters Oracle for so long. Um, and they are still fairly new to me. So I will be reading the book. These are Rebecca Campbell's, um, the Healing Waters Oracle artwork by Katie Lewis. Lewis, Lewis. Let's see what your message is. It's Atlantis. No way. How crazy is this? Okay. The reason I say this is because ever since I brought these particular pick a pile, or well, um, the pick a deck cards, when I was setting them up using mermaids and dragons, um, as the first set with the dragon and platinum brought in Atlantean stuff. So we have Atlantis. Keep the big vision. Stay in alignment as you grow. Um, wow. So this is even remembering. Um, the craziest thing is like, what was the downfall of this? I see this is a crazy portal. Like it's underneath water, right? They had so much power. Hmm. Keep the big vision, stay in alignment as you grow. That's what it said right here. Let me look at the camera. Okay, here we go, 836. Wow, and we grow, that's so weird. The next card is a happier me. Uh, and it says, we can grow only by accepting our current limitations. Time will bring new skills, but also new limitations. Each time we will do our best with what we have. Right, so imagine that like it, there are certain things so turbulence in waves, even turbulence in the air or the waves and stuff. Um, there are certain things that are out of our control and all you can do is kind of steer around it or even just um, wait for it. Sometimes you have to like surrender to certain things to get your, you know, sometimes, the more you fight certain things, uh, it's just going to deplete your energy. Um, anyways, so accepting even your own limitations. Okay, I am doing my best, and that is enough. Right. Doing your best. Okay, let's see your tarot message. Queen of Pentacles. Kindness. This, she's upright. This is about generosity, giving, uh, this feminine energy. And I do, when I read these, uh, I do keep them gender specific because I figure it gives more clarification, to be honest. 
Um, but this is more compassionate, right? And being generous and giving and um, so much, there's a lot of Taurus with it too because the tortoise is there, a little water energy, but Virgo Capricorn energy, and it doesn't have to be an earth sign energy. It is just about knowing how to, you know, really um, create earthly, um, you know, the money to buy the food, the luxury, there's mothering, and also being generous and kind, like giving good tips, um, paying it forward, understanding the flow of it. She has a star on her too, so... There may be a little Aquarian energy. She's very hopeful. She has a good, she, has, she respects money and understands the ebb and flow of, of even the currency and keeping the flow going. Hmm. Okay, let's the next one. Ah, judgment. That we have judgment in reverse. Self-reflection. I'm seeing, usually this is a sense of um, not getting a second chance at something. Feeling like judgment has come down. Um, woo, does that Libra energy too, right? But judgment in reverse. We got to see what else. Mm, someone not having this wake up call and getting a second chance at something. All right, let's see the next one. Happiness. Oh, there's unhappiness in it. A Leo energy, the sun. It could be a child. Um, wow, a judgment call. Let me look at this. 19. 2019 so maybe something in 2019 um the mind is a turbulent place even how interesting i'm saying this is even you know um being in some shadow energy there is some unhappiness usually this is seeing the light and both of these is seeing there's still some shadow um whoa yeah nine of cups in reverse Ooh. Hmm. That's very interesting. So I'm seeing like someone's not getting what they were hoping for, right? I see that there's someone not getting a second chance, a judgment call. They could have even been found guilty for some type of thing. Um, wow. If I were to reverse these, because I have to reverse the whole set. Um, you know, and some people, you know, they're like, I don't read reversals. So if they were to read this, they'd be like, Oh, there's generosity and kindness even and a second chance and a wake up call and happiness and getting a wish fulfilled. But in reality, someone's upset about maybe someone else's generosity or their wealth. Hmm. Hmm. There's interesting. Hmm. Maybe not getting exactly what you were hoping for or wishing for. I'm going to see what your sacred geometry is. The wild orchids <gasps> and the dragonfly. The 11. Wild orchids. Oh, I'm excited to see this one. There is something hidden. Look, look, look. You can see her hiding through there. There is a dragonfly there in um, transformation. Okay. And maybe orchids are important, like an, you know, a special flower even orchids are very uh temperamental but they did you know they can grow on trees it's really fascinating i don't know but maybe they cost a pretty penny i don't know orchids whatever wild orchids okay let's see an awareness okay so this is your mermaid uh message from the mermaid oracle i'm doing the best i can right having this awareness oh and we have a second healing message the pearl alchemy the reward at the end from grit to grace ah so look at that the pearl hmm the pearls so we all can talk about understanding the pearl how it's made it's actually something that gets inside of you know the uh the oyster uh the clam whatever and irritates it until and it's putting so it's made by the the animal putting some layering cal protective coating over it um so that it doesn't spread even it's kind of interesting and then we find this fascinating and we find a little jewel in there alchemy the reward at the end from grit to grace so the final card is that alchemy staying in alignment i am going to read out of the book with all of these now 
I am going to read it different ways because it depends on who you're dealing with, right? Um, maybe, so if, if Queen of Pentacles was in reverse, this is being a little greedy. This is the way I see it. Uh, hoarding money or feeling like she doesn't have enough, right? And it can be any sign um, with these, right? But if you are dealing with any of those other signs, very specific. Then judgment call would be upright. So then their backs are turned and someone's aware of this. And someone getting a second chance at something, bringing happiness and joy, even regarding children, um, and getting the wishes fulfilled. Nine of Cups, happiness, joy. But I'm seeing it in reverse. So someone feeling like they're not getting what they were hoping for. And maybe that's realizing, so if someone's in this funky energy, um, maybe it has something to do with the pearl. Literally, you know what I mean? A, a stone. But I got to keep this the way I got it. So vice versa, okay? Hmm. I, I also just see this as trying not to overindulge also and be, um, put this judgment in reverse about self-reflection. It's like someone's not having some, they didn't do the self-reflection. They're not having, and someone has this awareness of it, of their unhappiness and it, so when I pull in different signs, you know, we could have Leo energy, we could have Libra energy, any of the earth signs. Um, let me see. I see 1120. Hmm. Let's see what the book has to say. Okay. <clears throat> the Healing Waters Oracle from Atlantis to the Pearl. That's what we got. Keep the big vision. Stay in alignment as you grow. So staying in alignment as you grow. Is there reverse? I was saying, is there's reversals on these or not? There's so much. Like, I'm at page 43 before it's even telling me anything. Reading. Oh, my gosh. There's so much information in this little book before you even get to it. Oh, yeah. That, I see the pearl. The jewel at the end. <laughs> okay. Beneath the surface. Atlantis is the very first card in this deck. Wow, okay, so that is really fascinating because this is the first um, video. Um, so the only other video I did was an unboxing of this and a, an initial message from this. Um, I see 66 and 67 are the pages here. So people could be, there could be some Virgo, Gemini energy. Um, like I said, any of the other ones too. Yeah, 12, 13. Uh, there was a little Sagittarian, maybe Aquarius even. But then we've got all the earth signs. Okay, in his writings, the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. Wow, I just even talked about this. This is so crazy. I, I'm just, like, this is kind of blowing my mind a little bit. Um, And I was just sharing it. So also, uh, there's a great, there's some great information about the city of Atlantis and uh, Plato Right, as well as Dol Dolores Cannon and Edgar Casey's information about Atlantis. I feel like it's like that's what I that's what I've heard, you know. That's what I've heard what happened. <laughs> so <clears throat> and the Atlantic Ocean. Atlanteans. Okay, the sole inquiry here is what are you being called to create? How can you focus on creating rather than producing? How can you stay in alignment as you grow, right? Okay, so in his writings, the ancient Greek philosopher Plato described a great civilization called Atlantis, whose island home in the Atlantic Ocean was a marvel of architecture. Its capital city was made up of a series of concentric circles separated by moats of water, and at its center was a temple dedicated to Poseidon, the god of the sea. The Atlanteans were a highly advanced people who were very much tapped into and connected with the energy of the universe. They also harnessed the power of water and air in their technologies and practices. Perhaps this is where their tremendous psychic and magical abilities for manifesting their great visions into the physical came from. Eventually, though, Atlantis's growth got out of hand and its people became greedy and disrespectful. A series of earthquakes caused the island to sink to the bottom of the ocean. And for millennia, people have been captivated by the legend of the lost civilization. This card is one of 
huge visions. I was, I was smelling roses. I just smelled roses. That was interesting. Hmm. I'm like, is it me? Like, <laughs> uh, it smelled good, whatever it was. Hmm. Okay. This card is one of huge visions and promises. You have the potential to create great things in the world. However, it comes with a warning to stay in alignment when you grow, to create rather than produce. Don't get addicted to growth. Instead, stay true to your mission and your inner calling. Wow. This is also, then we had also, I'm doing my best and that is enough. You can grow only by accepting our current limitations. Hmm. Time will bring new skills, but also new limitations. And each time we will do our best with what we have. Right. All right. I'm going to go to the pearl now. This is such a pretty card for sure, for sure. Okay, 2055. This is the alchemy, the reward at the end from grit to grace. Um, so maybe I will even bring in some of the alchemy cards or um, you could check my channel. Let's see, did I do alchemy? Oh, I think I did it in the May readings. May, June. No, none in the June readings. I think it was May, yeah. Um, hmm. Anyways, may, maybe some of the other ones. So this is the transformation. So the beautiful thing that I'm actually seeing with this is even understanding the beautiful, this is beautiful, creating luxury, temples, you know, this city um, has, was so rich, very, very, very wealthy, right? But they got greedy. So there's a lesson to be learned with that, with, um, you know what I mean? So someone making a judgment call Atlantis didn't get a second chance. Oh, oh, wow. This is so interesting. Um, they were just, it was destroyed, right? The alchemy and even talking about what you're creating or manifesting and knowing that um, I, sometimes I absolutely, I hate that word. <laughs> um, what you're building, you know, what your creative thing is. Um, and, and I even try to make happiness. So it's not about mass production and wealth as it is. And so even art and different things, whatever your creative niche is, whatever you're working on and staying aligned in, um, there's like bumpy parts of it and knowing you gotta kinda ebb and flow with it. Um, but then there's art and that's even, the alchemy to me is even going through even struggles or different things um, and then f making something beautiful out of it. Like, you know what I mean? That's that's even the, the alchemy, the transmutation of the energy. People can do it in music. And it can be expressing hurt, pain, sadness, greed, you know, um, whatever. Huh. I see this Nine of Cups is also maybe like, um, you know, try not to overindulge. But not being able to get exactly what you want and understanding those limitations uh, being able to compromise even and work with work with what you got um work with you know wow it's pretty crazy here okay let's go to the pearl now that's so I, i'm so i was like oh my i'm blown away to be honest guys like I know that the tarot looks like it's not that happy, not that good or something with the judgment in reverse and nine of cups in reverse. But see, that's the thing of being able to like not um, to flip it into being gratitude, grateful for what you do have, even if it's not exactly what you want uh, or or it's not all falling into place uh, exactly or how you would want it. Um, and that's kind of life <laughs> learning to like. Yeah, I'm like, mm, I don't want duck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, the duck. Oh my goodness. Um, but the pearl, there was something else I wanted to say about this. I'm just going to go to it because, um, like I said, I'm just kind of blown away because Atlantis came through with the dragons uh, right when I was bringing in mermaids. And I, I mean, I guess I should have expected it, right? With the healing waters one. Hmm. So let's go to the pearl. The plunge. Oh, the rainbow. 
pink dolphin. Oh, I'm excited to see that one. The pearl, here we go. No way, I got 112 and 113. Oh my goodness. Healing Waters activation card. I'm ready to receive the jewels of my life. I'm ready to alchemize my hardships into healing and my grit into grace. Uh, so there's definitely maybe some Capricorn. Some of you maybe there, I, uh, it could be also Scorpionic or Aries, two, three, four, four, five. Yeah, 11 to 11. And it doesn't have to be those signs, but that's kind of crazy. Um, hmm. I feel like it could even be like a sister or a sister-in-law or even something to you or something like that. Hmm, let's see. Alchemy, the reward at the end. Pearls are one of the most precious treasures of this world and certainly of the sea. While the specifics of their creation remain a mystery, they're believed to be the result of a natural process. Certain mollusks produce pearls as a way of protecting themselves from irritants that enter their shells. The formation of a natural pearl is a rare occurrence, with only one in roughly 10,000 oysters producing one. So when you think about that too, it's only one out of 10,000. Hmm, maybe that's the whole thing of making things a little more rare instead of mass manufacturing cookie cutter crap. Sorry, that's what makes things unique. I think people like things like that instead of everyone can have the same thing. It does increase its value and its want, right? Supply and demand and all that good stuff. Um, the other thing I'm seeing, oh, there's the Celtic goddess of beauty. Oh, I'm so glad she put the pronunciation in here because I do not know how to say that. It's Kleena, but it's a, it's spelled C-H-L-I with the little slash O-D-H-N-A. And it's pronounced Kleena was the Celtic goddess of beauty, love, and the ocean. And it was believed she could be found in every ninth wave. Oh, the ninth wave. It said that the people would whisper their wishes and prayers into small pearl offerings placed within a shell and tied with seaweed and then cast them into the sea on the ninth wave in the hope that the goddess would grant their prayer. Offer up prayers to Kleena for the alchemy to continue to happen. The jewel at the end is near at the Kleena. I don't know why this sounds at the cleaners and maybe the cleaner one, the OxyClean. I don't know. I know it's a play on words with it. Okay very fascinating um what i see with that is also understanding you know like ten thousand oysters don't get this irritant because inside of them you know so it's a rare thing it can take nearly six months to even several years right to produce one pearl this card represents a precious message that something sacred is being created and it's likely being created by you Maybe you've been creating something in the physical, such as a child, a home, or bringing an idea to life, or perhaps your pearl is more metaphorical than that. Having dedicated yourself to alchemizing your hardships into healing and grit into grace, whatever it is, you're being acknowledged for your work and the deep roots required to truly rise. Rise. Wow. Um, so those are the two messages from the Healing Waters from Rebecca Campbell and Katie Louise. Uh, Louis, Louis, very beautiful. Brie, Bri Perry. Interesting. Where there is water, there is life. Unlock the sacred mysteries of the Healing Waters. That's, ah, uh, do you know what? All life contains everything. The water all life contains water that is very true let's go to this awareness even this awareness maybe even being aware of this uh that whatever it is this irritant um something good is coming forth um i feel like it's really just like you know having to have a little change in plans or not having exactly what they you know going somewhere let, I'm going to bring it into a simple factor because we're talking about food and things like that with the mini things, right? Um, let's say you're you're planning some meal and you got to go to the store and get the ingredients for it. 
and they're out of it. You can't find it. Or it costs too much or things like, I mean, that's one of those little things where you're like, all right, got to compromise. I guess we're like, maybe you didn't, <laughs> something like that. Um, very interesting. All right, so I'm gonna go to awareness now. These are the Karen Kay and Linda Olson. Uh, messages from the mermaids. This should be in the very beginning. Uh, there's quite, it's all alphabetical order. Here we go. So this page three, six and three, seven, 36, 37. So, wow, I, I do pull in Virgo, nine, 10, Gemini, Pisces, maybe Libra as well. Use your intuition to become more aware of what's going on around you at this time. It could also be to look under that rock. Oh my, maybe you're gonna find something like under the rock. This mermaid wants you to know that it's time to ground yourself and become more aware. Your senses may be heightened at this time. Being aware of potential scenarios can aid you as you swim through calm or troubled waters. Notice the details as you float through your life. Okay, what I'm getting with that as well is even um, having like a plan, alternate plan, right? Even seeing potential different directions, potential outcomes before you, you know what I mean? Um, right, becoming aware, potential scenarios. Your awareness is beautiful and a natural gift that can offer insights even before a situation has fully revealed itself. Clairvoyance and mediums have a heightened sense of awareness on the earthly and spiritual planes. Perhaps you're developing your sixth sense. If so, this card confirms it's the correct path for you and that your gift of heightened awareness can benefit others as well as yourself. Meditation is a wonderful way to enhance your awareness. When you meditate, it can help to put you in a place of enhanced feeling and seeing on many levels. So you automatically become more aware. Develop your perception by meditating with awareness as your intention and focus. When you become more aware, you tend to notice things you may otherwise not have seen. I feel like this is, I, I have to pull in Virgo energy because this is paying attention to all these little details, being more aware, okay? Um, that's why I bring in the energy of it, okay? Because we can all contain these. Clearly, if we, some people, it's stronger, like heavy earth signs, they're very, they very much come off earthy, right? But some of us have, uh, you know, an air sign can come off very chatty or very in their head or uh, so two different opposites, right? <laughs> or, but you could also have it like on a rising sign. So you come off this way to people, but that doesn't mean it's your sun sign. So that's the other thing of remembering that um, this awareness. Wow. And sometimes they can, these can be, um, ages two and stuff. Okay, this heightened awareness, 36 and 37. All right. So when you become aware, you tend to notice things you may otherwise not have seen. Awareness can also help you to foresee any potential challenges in life, thereby enabling you to take action to avert certain, certain circumstances. There might be someone around you who could benefit by becoming more aware. They or you could be too close to a situation to see it clearly. Hmm. Right. Therefore, consciously focusing on awareness will help them or you to see the situation from a place of heightened perception. Wow. Okay. And then we're going to go to the wild orchid. And that will be the final message. If you chose this first one, pile number one in the hoist and ducks. Uh, right. So we have the visionary path, wild orchids. Look, even the turbulence here. The mind is a murky in rough waters. Hmm. Okay. And I'm even seeing that this rough waters, you know, and the pearl and the irritation. There's some unhappy, like unhappiness even. Right? Not getting what you were hoping for. Someone like not getting a second chance. Or a judgment call be coming down. The 11 card. I open up to the freedom of love and 30 and 77. 
Universal love, unity consciousness, okay? 11.30. Um, I see 11.20. Um, 11.19. Interesting enough, I'm pulling a lot of Scorpio too, right? Um, and and Virgo. Uh, yeah, nine twenty, nine nineteen, um, and maybe maybe Libra. Ten ten. Ah, the eleven. Something hidden. Hmm, thirty nine. 11, 11, guys, three, nine, and 11, okay? 11, 11, that's what I'm calling it. It what came up upright. I think that's what's hidden even is this pearl. Are there something hidden in someone's head, their thoughts? You or them. Lush and verident, these wild orchids honor the exquisite beauty of the plant kingdom. Embedded in this card is the geometry of the star tetrahedron. However, something is hidden. Eyes look out from two green hearts quietly watching and waiting to see what will be revealed. The dragonfly is here to help you dispel illusion. This card asks you to look within and contemplate what you may be hiding or what is being hidden from you. This is not about intentional deception. There is no sense of trickery or lies. Nevertheless, something you have not considered may be affecting your inquiry, your question, right? View the beauty of these wild orchids and ask your inner knowing to uncover things hidden so that you may gain a broader perspective of your current situation. Simply recognizing that you are holding back may prompt your awareness. Wow, awareness. And the key word here was awareness. And then you had something hidden, right? And you're going to, that's the thing of seeing something and the little details that other people don't seem to see being completely aware and also understanding you or them. And when we are in the midst of it, we often don't see uh, certain aspects. Like that's why we have blind sight, you know, or, um, you know what I mean? Where we can, uh, where others can help us see pieces that we didn't, vice versa, right? That's what it's saying. That's coming through for you guys is being aware of this even. Hmm. Okay. All right. Simply recognizing, right, that you're holding back may prompt your awareness to reveal what has been unseen. Your willingness to bring to light things concealed may open the doors for your perception and strengthen your ability to experience the wholeness of the situation. Wow, I'm doing my best and that is enough. Remember that. So this is showing that we do have, there are certain limitations that we have to, uh, you know, rules and the way of the world, the economy, different things like that, storms even, grow only by accepting current limitations and going and moving with them. Okay, wow, that was fascinating. Um, I am going to move on now to the next one. Thank you all so much for, if you chose pile number one and these uh, six Bayabon, Bayabo hoys and ducks. <laughs> the ducks, I'm sorry. Quack, quack. <laughs> okay, turbulence, the mind is a marquee. All right, I'm going to move these out and um, move on to the next one. You're welcome to just continue right on, like I was saying. It's with the money and the credit card. But if not, check my channel uh, for your rising sign, moon sign messages, and other pick a card you might be drawn to. Thank you, thank you. And let me continue on. Okay, this one is interesting, right? Okay, so we got the credit card, 3913. So if you chose number two and the credit card with the credit card machine... Uh, like I'm seeing, you know, it's definitely how you can just tap it to pay by inserting the credit card. I didn't put the sticker on, but anyways, let's see what your cards are. If you are drawn into this. Okay. Okay. I'm going to set that there. Your first message from the C melodies is opportunity. You will prove yourself and discover if you, if you brave the rough seas. Ah, hmm. So if you brave the rough seas, you will prove yourself and discover. So there's an opportunity. 
interesting, but it is showing like, you know, a little stormy seas. Hmm. Okay, let's get the happier me. Love yourself and you will be the light that others are drawn to. Opportunities. And this next one is I am open to love and love yourself. Right? And you will be the light that others are drawn to. Okay. Maybe some of you are even... I mean, we all go and have to put that in. So I don't know how this is even <laughs> relevant. Maybe this is for everybody. Hmm. If you work for a credit card company even or something like this. Or um, you work at a grocery store or a place like a checkout place. You know? I mean, or you have this... You know, we all go into these places and buy... Hmm, maybe that card. It did say corporate card, so we'll see. Let's see what your uh, healing waters message is. Oh my goodness. The mist. Um, Do you guys see the light? Look at that. Do you see that on that card? This is so beautiful. <gasps> the mist. Trust your inner compass. Be led from within. Look how light blue. This is so interesting. So these are different, completely different decks, right? Being open to love. It has this beautiful mint color. I want to put this one in the center. The mist. Trust your inner compass. So, and be led from within. I feel like even, so even there's misty, you know, like in the sea. Uh, it sometimes often seems a little foggy, right? Um... Wow, that is so, and so it's almost like you have to trust that inner guidance because you can't see clearly. Be open for love. Okay. I'm ex I don't know why I love this card so much. Wow, um, the healing waters, wow. Katie Louise, that, that, she's the artist on this. Wow, so I'm very excited. Um, let's see. Let's see what your uh, sacred geometry is. Okay, out beyond Orion. Oh, this one, a brand new one. Out beyond Orion. I feel like I read this in a different one. I never pulled the card yet, but it did come in reverse. So they are read in reversals. Be open for love. Beyond Orion. Okay, so this is out far in the galaxy. Okay, right? <laughs> Crossing over 40. Oh, boy. 440. Um, wow. I'm like, oh boy, is this really going? Eh. Okay. This is even you, someone in your life, could potentially, or someone who has already passed away, could be trying to come through. Brave the rough seas. Okay, let's see this one. Um, uh, we have two more. The Wheels of Light, 50. So this is even, do you see every single one of these little chakra portals with a different color and it's spinning and activating um, to be completely in alignment, 40 and 50. I feel like someone's only 40 even or 404, 50. Okay, the next one, the traveler's prayer. Oh my goodness though, even, uh, you know what I mean? I'm seeing, I mean, the ocean is right there, right? And I'm seeing like a sunrise. I'm seeing this as sunset and they're, they're actually like, it's like low tide or something even. Um, and gratitude of safe travels. Wheels of light, 50 and 20. Okay, now we have some tarot and your final uh, mermaid. I have the high priestess. Ooh, someone didn't trust our intuition about something. I'm going to read these both ways. I see this is infinity. Life is never ending. I feel like someone didn't trust their intuition or someone even could have shared information that they uh, shouldn't have. Uh, Ace of Swords in reverse. Ooh. Yeah, I'm seeing that someone doesn't know this. They don't have clarity on something. Hmm. I might, if I turn those over, we get the truth, but the truth is keeping something to yourself, uh, getting that clarity, um, 
This is intuitively knowing. Let's see your mermaid. Acceptance. Whoa. Acceptance. Mmm. Wow, finding acceptance with this. Crossing over? Oh my goodness. Because every time I read that, I was like, back in the day there was that crossing over with Jonathan Edwards. And... Uh, you know, he's a medium, but this was, I, I mean, I'm sure maybe there's books or something, but um, uh, this connecting with past on loved ones or someone who is uh, or has. Hmm. Maybe they didn't see the signs or something. Or someone told someone other information. Now, awareness was in reverse too, so I'm, I might. I'm going to re read what the miss says. Let's say your mermaid over here, being open to love. Prove yourself. Love yourself and you will be the light that others are drawn to. The mist, the light, so they can see clearly through things. It says to be brave, right? Hmm. Okay. Let's go into the mist first and foremost. Wow. Trust your inner compass and be led from within. The mist. Here we go. I see deep sea diving. The way of the mystic. Learn through experiencing depths. I trust my path and choose to see the sacred everywhere and within all things. I follow the intelligence that's within me. 80 and 81. Okay, healer, seer. Let's see. LM. We're almost there. Okay. This is 108 and 109 are the page numbers. What's your intuition calling you to do right now? Hmm. Maybe someone isn't trusting their intuition because so oftentimes high priestess can mean that. Not trusting intuition. Maybe not speaking truthfully or uh, not having this clarity or honesty. Or receiving information that is not truthful. Huh. Intuition is pointless unless we act on it, but it rarely makes logical sense. Why, which is why it takes faith to trust it and courage to act on it. But when we do gather up the will to act on our intuition, each and every day we'll find ourselves living a truly blessed, deeply aligned life that's led from within. I call it living a soul-led life. There's a golden thread before you, calling you toward it, beckoning you forth. You're being called to trust your inner compass and be led from within. Mist and fog form when it's extremely humid and water vapors condense to form droplets that hang in the air. When mist or fog set in, it's as if everything's hanging in a state of mystery. When you're walking in the mist, we make sure we're facing the right way. We slow down and enter a state of trust. Following our intuition is similar to that. Think of this even if you're, if you're driving in fog, you know? If you turn your lights on higher, it's just harder to see, right? So this is when you, you have to, almost, you do have to trust your intuition and watch the lines on the road and take things slower. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just giving that as an example. It is a very beautiful card. I feel like there's a, I mean, this is even that veil because the crossing over is right there too. Uh, wow. The mist, the mystery. So there is a lot of Piscean and maybe even Scorpionic energy, be just this uh, into the unknown, maybe even that moon energy, right? Um, Dorothy. No way. It's bringing up Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. Wow. You've had the power within you the whole time, you know, Dorothy. Um, here we go. While you may not know every step along the way or the exact destination, you're called to trust your inner compass, to trust that the path will appear before you and for, and for you, before you and for you. Like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz following the yellow brick road, we're all being led home 
to ourselves and our soul's path. It just requires us to consistently trust the guidance system within. Wow. Okay. So that is your message from the healing waters. I'm going to move on here to the sacred geometry to get more clarification and then also acceptance um, with this mermaid. Okay. Sacred geometry. I got to double check. Yeah. Okay. This one is for the original. This is Francine Hart's out, uh, out beyond Orion. Orion. And crossing over. In reverse. Four and 40. How weird is that? Okay. How many do we have here? One, two, three, four. Four. I see. This could be where you are today. Your inward journey. Your journey into the world. The wheels of light. And your path to the future, the outcome, traveler's prayers. Mm. Those are potentials. These have some amazing, like if I, I, I always say I might do something differently where I actually do one of the spreads for the sacred geometry. I use this for um, the June's monthly messages. Uh, very interesting. These are fairly new. Um, yeah, for this month, actually. I mean, I have a little bit of knowledge with sacred geometry, but it's always fascinating to see the work the authors and the artists have. Francine Hart for both of these. Okay, number four. Wow, there we go. I open it right up. Holographic. Oh, weird. Because this is what this reminds me of right here, right? It looks like holographic. That's what it says right here, out beyond Orion. In reverse, this says, it seems you have no time to give, no time to spare. Your life is filled, not with things that give it meaning, but with chores, responsibilities, and constructs from that, from this vantage point belong to someone else's life. Oh. Take a step today to regain your autonomy and self-direction. In doing even one thing that brings you joy, you will escape the grip time holds on your life and move toward growth and freedom. And so I definitely, that's so interesting. So I, I mentioned it in one of the other ones, but uh, for no reason at all. And I was like, well, maybe I just walked a lot because I was noticing in my right, my right ankle, my right foot, um, which when I'm tuning into my body and it has anything to do with my readings and uh, being like a physical empath or giving, but it can also show that there's, there's a need to in this timeline, in this earthly realm not in a past life because sometimes it can be something wrong in past life coming through but this is this timeline and someone not wanting to take a step forward like they can't see clearly and there's stagnance hmm okay take a step today right so i see 423 on that in particular and maybe that is taurus energy could also be four or five areas, whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but those are the page numbers I see there. Now I'm going to go to the 40 and read this in reverse. I'm transition. Reverse. This card indicates that an ending is taking place in your life. It may be the end of a relationship, a job, or a life phase. Your situation could be as serious as knowing that you or a loved one is about to make a transition to the other side. Reach for the guidance that will help you gently through this time of transition. Offer the love that will make the journey easier and accept that even death is not an end, but it constitutes movement into another dimension of being. Nine five. Wow, 95, maybe someone could be 95. Uh, I see 40 and 95. So I will pull in potentially even Virgo energy. These could also be ages, right? Or um, dates or years of birth. Um, we're going to go to the wheels of light now. So what I can see from something, and this what this, I'm just how I'm going to call it, okay? That's going to, what I'm going to call it <laughs> is that uh, potentially if, so I brought up even you could be, you could work for one of these companies or things like this, or, and it's like, it's a comfort zone. It's a comfort bubble for maybe something near your work, right? Maybe you want to get into something else, or, um, if there is someone in your life, 
there there i mean and this could represent just an ending of a job or career right or things like that but in some instances it could be that someone you know um is transitioning <laughs> um passing away and it could just be end of life stuff right and so it's important to uh you know i don't be there uh and maybe there's some stagnancy regarding that the mist because that's why i see high priestess in reverse let's see what these wills of light and traveler's prayer mm. and see and she has the infinity here but it's upside down and so is the truth mm. how interesting upright would have be trusting and getting that clarity Taking the one step forward. Let's get even this balance, the wills of light. Okay, now though, I'm going into the visionary path. I believe these ones are visionary paths. Yeah, okay. I have to look at the back of them to make sure. <laughs> okay, 50. So I keep opening it to spirit can. I brought up 95 again. Okay, so 95 uh, coming out again. Uh, and 39. Um, courage and transformation. Uh Puma, cougar, mountain lion. How crazy is this? I mean, so that's pretty crazy synchronicity. With these, I mean, I opened up, I, the card number 40 was page 95. And I've opened the book up to go to the next, and where I open it, I open up page 95. Uh, so, uh, wow. This seems to pop up a lot, this particular card, since I've started. This is the shaman dances and drums around a fire and is called in the energy of spirit kin. We are here to call upon this magnificent spirit kin to demonstrate the gift of courage. Courage enters your life in many different ways. It is fearlessly standing up for what you believe to be true. Courage is being confident in your discernment and ability to speak from your heart. It's trusting that the universe is on your side, guiding and protecting you. Courage is the strength that comes from within. It is being who you are truly without fear or judgment of yourself or others. It's speaking out when you believe strongly for or against something. See, fear of judgment, right, of yourself or others. So it's fear of being judgmental. But it, you also have to speak out against things. That not means making a judgment call that you you felt strong about right how beautiful because i see brave brave and confidence you will prove yourself you will prove yourself and discover if you brave the rough seas this is stepping out into the unknown even and that can be scary for sure and maybe that shows like you're there's unsure you don't see clearly something is blocked here Okay, now we're going to go the wheels of light. Whoa, and movement, the octomotion. Dancing. Uh, that one came in, in a different one, too. Chakras and energy centers. 117 or 11.7. So this, this explains what they are, okay? Um, this wheels of light. Chakras are the human body's subtle rainbow energy centers. The primary chakras are seven spinning vortexes of energy and light. Simple attributes credited to these chakras from base to crown include number one, survival and grounding. So number one is the base. So it's right on your like tailbone. Okay. Right. Feeling safe. Survival. Number two is that the sexual energy and emotions. To me, it's also, it's the passion. So even movement of dancing um, and the sexual energy, right? Okay. And it is there by everybody, you know, your sexual organs. Um, okay. Then we have three, which is willpower, self-confidence, and laughter. Uh, so that's also sacral. Right? Is that where we put it? Yep. <coughs> so this is more fun. And number four is love, heart, intellig intelligence, and compassion. So the heart is the green, right? Interesting enough, so with this, they have the red as the root. I usually think black or brown is the root. And the red-orange is maybe. 
sacral and then solar plexus though is that belly button that joy that laughter like you know uh and also trusting your gut um you know what i mean like something gives you a bad your your gut instinct you know that <laughs> um and then the heart chakra um, is the green. Also light pink works. I notice how light blue the uh, throat chakra is. This is a very calm communication. It's not heavy emotions. Uh, it says here, yeah, creativity and communication. Number six says intuition, imagination, and concentration and that's that third eye right right and right in the center of your forehead and then your top of your is your crown your brain right um the very top the crown and that's about union bliss and empathy when they are all spinning in balance they vitalize the body and support physical emotional and mental well-being Pulling this card reinforces your intention to balance and strengthen your energy centers so that you may better engage your purpose and act in the world as a whole, healthy being of light. Envision your chakras as a rainbow column of spinning lights. Imagine each color as a spinning bright and clear. Feel each rainbow vortex aiding you in your path toward wholeness. Wow. And then we have the Traveler's Prayers the 20 curiosity and adventure 57 this card celebrates the spirit of curiosity and adventure the traveler is a perfect embodiment of the openness it takes to fearlessly step into the world and experience the many wonders that may come your way the geometry embedded in the image was borrowed from the mayan temple walls at Uxma in the Yucatan. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced that right. Uxma, U-X-M-A-L. Crosses, steps, and angular spirals combine to create an ordered pattern. The figure raises his arms in, in prayer at sunset in salutation of another day of adventure. Right? This is like the gratitude of uh, having fun exploring. Hmm. Wow. Wow. As you travel this wide world and to the realms beyond, whether physically or in your imagination, keep learning, remain ever curious, and make yourself available to the universe of unlimited potential. As you embark, a prayer flies with you, a prayer for safety and loving encounters, for beauty and expansion of your worldview, and for adventures that occur only when your heart is open allowing you to embrace the magic wow 2057 and 2012 coming through as well maybe even some taurus energy maybe leo uh libra it can be any right any sign i just throw them out there um so wow i'm seeing this i'm, I'm understanding it better you see as i'm as I'm reading the books and seeing how they're communicating. So I think it's necessary to trust yourself, like trust your intuition. Uh, and there's something you know you want to move forward to. And it's showing that there are prayers and you are protected for uh, where it is you feel drawn to, where this opportunity um, and trusting your inner compass Wow. Yeah, because this out, out beyond Orion was saying you're doing things that are not in alignment with you. You're doing for things for other people or something, you know. Um, hmm. All right. And acceptance. Let's find this final acceptance card from Karen Kay and Linda Olson. Very beautiful. This will be in the very beginning. Because they are alphabetical order here. Ah, abundance is first. Oh, there we go. Acceptance here. Wow, 32 and 33. It's so interesting because this to me does is very Piscean. Um, I also say that there could be some mothering, nurturing, or even grandmother energy. Um, 
kind of coming through as well. There's this doorway and maybe it has something to do with this crossing over thing, okay? Um, acceptance is the doorway to freedom. Accepting what is going on releases any feelings of resistance and will help you to feel liberated. This mermaid is at peace because she's in total acceptance of her situation. She asks you to release any resistance or desire of wishing things to be different and to totally trust and accept things exactly as they are. Our ego can become very demonstrative when things don't work out the way we planned. Yet once we release any desire for possible outcomes and surrender fully to the divine plan, things have a habit of working out even better than we might have imagined. When we're in a state of acceptance, it means positive solutions can more easily flow towards us. We literally drop any barriers to solutions and energetically welcome in new and creative answers to our dilemmas. Accepting your lot isn't a negative outlook. Through acceptance comes peace and through peace comes breakthrough. Many enlightened masters lived in a state of acceptance, which enabled their spirits to soar to infinite heights so they can merge energetically with the divine to become at one. If this card appears next to the trust card, the meaning of both are amplified. Trust swims hand in hand with acceptance. To me, trusting, it even says like, uh, you know, being led and you have high priestess to the mist says trust your inner. So I'm reading acceptance and trust here. So this may definitely for some of you, it, it is like you watched all the way through. Um, there is a bit of an interlinking for sure in that first video as well. Um, because I was getting it is, uh, and I'm just sharing it for some of you who just jumped through the comments or, um, so maybe you'll want to watch that one too, because it was about accepting certain limitations in that world. And that's acceptance, right? Um, wow. An ego. Hmm. All right. It also says, perhaps someone close to you is in denial or refusing to accept the reality of a situation. If so, perhaps you can gently guide them towards acceptance as a form of relief and peace of mind. Meditation can help you to achieve a state of peaceful acceptance. Perhaps there's something or someone you need to forgive. Remember, forgiveness is another form of acceptance. 33. Wow could even be a mother or a grandmother for some of you or certain things like that. It doesn't have to be that or even accepting, uh, you know, with the crossing over or an ending of something, right? Um, and if there is grief from loss, this is that final stage of, um, that's how I see that is, but this can also mean that someone isn't accepting certain things, right? Because that's always that final stage, but it takes a while to get there. There's, you know, bargaining. There's anger. There's sadness. There's woulda, shoulda, couldas. There's blame. You know. Things like that. Sometimes it is, it is easier when people are, you know, they've lived a very long life, you know or they're in a lot of extreme pain in their physical body, you know, but, um, and that doesn't have to be, but we all have to face that with our loved ones and even our own mortality, right? But then also understanding it's not the end. Uh, and there is a sense of needing to feel safe that you can step out and uh, feel where you're guided, trusting even on your path. You. You can't always see the full, like, you know what I mean? You only can see a little bit of uh, the future and it's like taking those steps forward. And it says that you have prayers uh, surrounding you for your travels. Mm. Okay, that is the messages, wow. So there is some opportunity coming for you and you're gonna need to be brave <laughs> to step into it. Um, you know, and trust yourself and your intuition. That's, you know what I mean? If this doesn't resonate and you're just happy where you are and in total acceptance, then that's fine. But if you're not, um, it also says being open to love. So this could have to do with love. But this is self-love too. And that's how you even, when you're in, when you have good self-love, then 
um, others will be drawn to you too, right? And being open. So if that is the case, then maybe working on your heart chakra, the greens or the pinks even. How beautiful that, I'm sorry, but this card is beautiful into the unknown. It's a little scary though, but look how ethereal it is even. There's a little Virgo on it because my little, there's a hair. Every time I see one of my hairs or something get on there and I, that's what I'm like, oh my gosh, pull out. <laughs> that's my sign that there's a little Virgo energy. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm going to move on to the next one. Thank you. Thank you. What are we on time? One ten twenty two. So yeah. And this one I, th I thought I'm going to do all three. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can do three and see how long that takes. Um, because I had set it up that way, I, and I was like only wanting to do two at a time, but that's not how it's working, right? Okay, so thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, that's the whole thing of like, I'm just, I go with how it flows too, and what I wanted to do. And sometimes what I was planning isn't what needs to come through or what uh, I end up doing with the cards and things like that. All right, I'm moving on to this next one, the final one of pile number three. All right, pile number three at 111.05. If you chose pile number three and OxyClean for your laundry, getting the stains out uh, for your mini brand and this third pile of messages from the mermaids, let's go. And if you listen all the way through, let's see what they have to say. Uh, maybe there's more clarification. Sometimes they are interlinked, right? So we will just see your first message is empathy. There's more beneath the surface. Ah, there's opinions. I'm seeing something about opinions. Okay, look at this. Look at this, how funny. I just need to say from this one card, I end with the mini bread of the OxyClean. So this is cleaning our laundry, cleaning our clothes, dirty laundry. This is, there's more beneath the surface, right? So beyond our our physical outer appearance. Okay, let's see what this one says. I'm courageous and I stand up for myself. <gasps> Look at that lion right there. That's a beautiful artwork too. Know your worth and don't allow others make you feel any less. Their opinions are just that, opinions. Ooh, maybe someone has said something before about having stains on your clothes or anything like that or laundry. Huh. Be courageous and stand up for yourself. There is a lot so far with this set of three about being brave. Um, wow. And courageous. All right. Let's see. Um, the healing waters message for this deck. Okay. It's in reverse. So we'll see. The sweet waters. Sensuality. Romance. Enjoyment. Fertility. And balance. The beautiful sweet waters. Okay, let's see. I might switch these. Put that one down there. Being courageous and stand up for yourself. Sensuality, romance. Okay, we have, I have two of each of the sacred geometries. One is the regular and one is the visionary path. Let's see, the first one is invoking the infinite. Oh my goodness. Uh, it's in reverse, but I'm pretty sure, we will see, I'm gonna read it. See if I read birds read. Can I talk? Reads reversals. Look, it's a 57, or excuse me, a 52. Could be 25. Invoking the infinite. Right. Understanding infinity. There's a whole bunch of DNA here. Never ending. Eight eights on the hands. Wow. Okay. That's the first one. Next one. Wow. The Merkaba. Wow. Uh, Merkaba. This is the vehicle. <laughs> 46. I see 710. I see potentially Taurus, Cancerian, Aries, energies. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Uh, this is it about, this is to me is Merkaba 1212 also. Uh, it is about a vehicle of uh, energy. So the Merkaba is sits around your, their energy points around you even. Hmm very fascinating i'm so excited it came out let's see the visionary path the heart woman okay the heart woman this is working on the heart woman oh my goodness so i just barely brought up the heart it was like the very last one 61 this one came out in one of the monthlies um 
and I can't remember who it was for in particular right now. But this is a very, look at this, this card is very, look at, it just has a lot of love that comes through it. Looks like there's angel wings even. She has beautiful blue eyes and like this golden citrine or something uh, on her third eye. How, wow, a lot of yellow. So even, even though it says heart with the soft pink romance, this is Venus energy and balance, right? Maybe even Taurus or Libra, but oh, it's infertility. Maybe there's scorpionic enjoyment. There's fifth house stuff even, you know, Leo energy, maybe. Let's see the next one. <gasps> no way, the shaman, 22. And Dean shaman, the Merkaba. Oh my goodness. There is more beneath the surface. Yeah. Okay, we're going to see what the tarot is. Six of cups. Oh my, this is about uh, something from your childhood or past. It's going to bring up nostalgia. It's going to be about... Uh, See, invoking the infinite. This could have something to do with past lives. Depends on, you know, but it's good. Look at it, even childhood. Oh my goodness. Six of cups over here, invoking the infinite. Six, seven. And four of pentacles and holding on to it. Six, four. I'm pulling a lot of Gemini in this one now again. Um, And six, one, right? Um. 722, some Leo too. 1022, Scorpio. Yeah, 52. So this is about feeling safe and secure. This could, this is sometimes holding on to. I see you holding on to something, some good memories, nostalgia from the past. Maybe it's actually even memorabilia or physical items. Um, from your own childhood for your or, or there, there's just good nostalgia with this and feeling safe and secure oftentimes this could be about feeling in a sense of greed or you can't but I'm not seeing it so much holding on to this 10-4 and the final one is patience huh? and being patient yeah it takes so much time like she's looks like she's even so she's pregnant here and that's like you know so much patience waiting too. Oh wow. The heart woman. And being courageous. Patience. Oh my. This is it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's jump into the books. We're gonna start with the sweet waters. I open it up to deep sea diving. The way of the mystic. Okay, I opened up before learning through experiencing, trusting my path, and choosing to see the sacred everywhere. And within all things I follow. Wow. The pearl. Oh my gosh. So the pearl was in the very beginning one. Okay. I just have to die. Well, was it this? Yeah. And I just turned it to that too. Uh, so that's even getting through that. Um, I, As a mother and um, other mothers might understand. and uh, But there's this, you know, like so being pregnant you feel like crap you got morning sickness you, you can't sleep you're uncomfortable you get heartburn every time like it's this sense of irritation there's something inside of you, right okay i know this is the weirdest thing but you feel you don't maybe you you might be glowing there might be times of it but there's times where you're you're, you're depleted all of your energy is going to this child right or your body's changing all the different things but at the end and through this huge sacrifice uh, of, of your own body. And then, um, you know, giving birth is painful. Uh, but then you get this little beautiful creature that that's the pearl, right? Like through the grit. Hmm. And maybe there is something like that. Um, there is pearls for literally that have to do with your childhood or something, your mothers, grandmothers, something like that. Okay. The heart woman. Oh, that's what it's so cute. Oh. Okay. I'm going to get to sweet waters. She who flows. There's a lot of cards in this one. So it's, here we go. 
I see, let's see. Your soul inquiry here. How can you recognize, receive, and enjoy the sweetness of your life a little bit more? A little bit more enjoying the sweet waters, the mother goddess. Ah, wow, it's Oshun. Oshun. Mm. So I see even uh, Aries, Gemini, Virgo, Libra, 79, 10, 11. Yeah, Libra again, potentially. And I'm just pulling out those those signs. Um, but I see here, sensuality, romance. So this is Oshun. Okay, okay. Oshun. I, she is very compassionate, loving, a really mother. She's a very mothering. Hmm. Oh, okay, sweet waters are associated with fresh waters. The fresh waters, not the salt waters, okay. The fresh waters of the earth and with the sweet breast milk of the great mother. Osun, Oshun, or Orisha, deity of Nigeria's Yoruba people, is associated with water, fertility, sensuality, and love, and also with the color yellow. <gasps> Okay, I can't even say there's so much yellow. I didn't know that. That's something new for me. But there was so much, like, like, look. These are different decks. The heart woman, and she got the yellow, the yellow flower right here. And the yellow on her forehead or on her, like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my gosh. I'm seeing this connection. It's so beautiful. Mm. Wow. And bees, honey, the mother goddess. Osun, Osun is the great mother goddess who brings balance to earth and to humanity. And she's also referred to as a mother of the orphans. In Italy's Villa de Este in Tivoli, near Rome, there's a famous fountain called the Fountain of Diana of Ephesus, or the Fountain of Mother Nature. Mmm. It features a sculpture of the Roman goddess Diana as Mother Nature with multiple breasts out of which flow sweet fresh waters. So this is interesting. So it is talking about even, you know, taking care of orphans. Uh, of uh, She's like of all children that need a mother, you know. Wow. Fresh water. We know that we need fresh water to survive, and yet we've not been protecting and appreciating the very thing that sustains us. When the waters are clean and protected, life is in balance and the world is fertile. This card is an invitation to enjoy the simple, sweet pleasures of life, to appreciate the fertility of nature all around you, and to tend to your own garden and the sweet waters of your life. Wow. So, making sure you're getting, staying hydrated, right, and getting your water. Uh, the fresh water, but very interesting. And even realizing, you know, there are places in the world where it is and they do not have clean fresh water, right? Um, and we often take that for granted. Hmm. Courageous and I stand up for myself. Wow. There's more under this. Wow. Okay. I'm just kind of blown away. That's so beautiful though. Okay. Let's see what's next. <clears throat> With the sacred geometry, the visionary path, the heart woman, and then the Andean, sh Andean shaman. This one's very fascinating. Ever since I've seen this one, and I see this, this symbol now. If you look up, there's such a connection to this because it is the same thing about taking care of the planet, uh, nature, and respect. Um uh, Beautiful. There's so much sunshine. There's glowing. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Oh my goodness. Sorry, I'm just getting so excited. Oh, and the star tetrahedron, the Merkaba, the vehicle. I open it up to that one. Uh vote. So that's very similar to this one. I want to show it to you in this. Uh, this is a different book, right? But this one is the star tetrahedron because it has all these little stars over it as well. Um, and it does. Some work about is about the connection of male and female. Understanding that 
the star tetrahedron is also called. Yeah, the Merkaba. The Merkaba is believed to be an instrument of expanded awareness, a time-space vehicle for multidimensional travel, and a path towards ascension. Okay, that was the star one, but uh, star tetrahedron. But uh, I'm going to go to the heart woman. But I think Andean shaman first. The welcome and the vessel. Wow, so the vessel, once again, you're a vessel. Oh my goodness, so think about this as a as a woman, you're a vessel. Uh, um, we're all, we all can be, our bodies are vessels for our spirits and our souls, right? Um, and then we have the Merkaba being also the vessel. This is even a, a channeling. A, you're like a vessel for uh, communication from higher, higher than us. The star, like from the stars, you know welcome this is even being very open and welcoming the andean shaman expresses the essence of welcome he greets you in salt salutation extending hand and heart energy and heart woman heart energy inviting you to embrace the joy of feeling truly welcomed he is a vessel of spirit consciously able to receive soul energy and move it through his being, transmitting it into the world. The stepped geometry refers to the Andean symbol of the Chakana. I don't know if I pronounced that right. It's C-H-A-K-A-N-A, -A, Chakana, which is indicative, indicative of spirit moving through the lives of people. Similar symbols are used in various cultures around the world. This card invites you to receive this welcome with a smile and an open heart. Feel how this open-hearted energy lifts your spirit and brings comfort to your being. It may be that you could use a dose of acceptance and the approval of a genuine welcome. This card may also indicate your readiness to become a vessel of spirit in order to welcome in the energies required for your sacred work. See yourself openly receiving and transmitting these messages. Trust the relationship you have with spirit and the ease with which you become a vessel when you recognize that union. Open your heart, your heart, laugh out loud. I welcome the strength of your true essence as a vessel of light and invoking the infinite. I want to say, because Six of Cups and reflection of the past, it also can be a sense of even uh, with the shaman here, there can be... Um, you know, remembering these things are, I mean, these are good uh, connections here, but even traveling into past life or other dimensions, right? Past life stuff or just time travel, time. <laughs> I know this is weird, but yeah, it is. Okay. No way in 61. Oh my goodness, guys. These synchronicities are blowing my mind with the numbers here. So heart woman is 61 card. All right. And then open the heart and be very opening and welcoming. Welcome. So welcome. Huh. Maybe you are new to the channel, but welcome as well. Um, I think this is so beautiful because empathy. Why say empathy? Hmm. Empathy. There's more beneath the surface. So it's seeing be beyond the surface. I just got to say there might be someone that it has something to do with laundry. I mean, moms are doing the laundry and cleaning the stuff too. And not that dads don't either, but, um, and buying the, you know, the oxy clean. Um, I'm almost like maybe someone actually had some stains or spots or something. And, it, and that's like, I don't, I don't know how, maybe someone was rude about it or put them down for what they, even their clothing or something like that. I don't know. There's a beautiful welcomeness. And look, she's very patient. This, this over here, they're very patient. They're, they're holding on and they're waiting. They're holding, I'm seeing like holding the door open for you, even holding on to this space, this vehicle. How weird opening the door for the vehicle is that <laughs> oh opening the door welcome into our place wherever you're going or something like that very they're very welcoming or you are this way okay um wow these are great upright i do want to see why this one in reverse that one could potentially show some 
areas of this is like the best reading so far guys that's one I, what the fuck what's that okay i'm going to 61 now so maybe someone is 61 or 61 uh it could be gemini energy maybe someone and that's what i'm saying like they could be that age also 22 uh we got 52 there's a lot of gemini energy right huh and maybe even maybe aquarius or Aries, even 47, 47. All right, I'm going to the heart woman now, 61. Compassionate Pele. Inner knowing and integrity. 139. Okay, this is a good sign, you guys. Everything, if you were drawn into this, this is a really good sign. You know, I feel like we're often we're a little unsure whether we can trust people as there's so many you know but this person like this is open heart um they're very open and compassionate and i find it fascinating i'm just so blown away that i didn't really notice it until i looked on this card too but because normally if we we look at this we would think third eye or you know crown chakra area uh, and oftentimes those are an indigo or purple uh, color. And the yellow can represent joy, right? And uh, happiness in the head, in the thought. That's the way I look at it. Um, and maybe this person wears yellow all the time, loves yellow. You even do it. I don't. I, oh my heck, I'm wearing yellow, guys. Ah! <laughs> I just looked down. I'm like, what? Okay. I don't know. I don't have anything on, but but it's so I'm laughing. This talks about laughing even, because um, that's what that yellow is even the joy. Um, my shirt is a deaf tone shirt though, so yeah, it's not really the it's not. <laughs> if y'all know what that's about, but um, back to school. <laughs> okay, here we go. This heart woman is filled to bursting with the radiance of universal love and light from within. She holds in her arms three water lilies, which represent our potential for enlightenment. She is surrounded by a vibrant feather-like geometry borrowed from the 2006 crop formation. She stands firm in her essence and here represents the highest and best in all of us. This card requests that you, man or woman, connect with this woman of heart and your own inner knowing and core integrity. How might you more fully embrace life's potential and live wholly from your heart? What must come to the surface in order for you to live your personal truth? Be not afraid. Release feelings of inadequacy and realize that by the original integrity of your soul, you are a powerful being of manifestation. You are the beloved child of God, perfect and whole, nurtured and loved. Resolve today to connect with your inner knowing and the reality of your divinity. This brilliance is fundamental to all beings. As you let your gift shine, you also give other people permission to do the same. As you are liberated from the worry of not being good enough, your presence will, without a doubt, liberate others, allowing your light to be a beacon of support and encouragement in someone's darkness may aid in liberating them from the shadow and dullness that holds many in doubt. Stand fully in your own inner knowing and trust the integrity of your heart. Wow. Okay. That was from the Sacred Geometry card of the Visionary Path. Francine Hart. Heart, isn't that lovely? H A R T, which actually is a deer. You know what I mean? De a deer, a stag. Uh, <laughs> so much about the heart woman. Oh my goodness. There is so much love in this whole reading. Holy crap. And even, I, I said it even with the holding and feeling safe and secure. Maybe even someone is holding someone else's finances even for them. And it's uh, in safe keeping. But I'm just seeing them holding, maybe holding a vehicle even. There's something like this. Holding the door open. 52 okay so i want to see this one invoking the infinite so we've got all these eights here right the abundance the infinite infinity six seven oh my gosh uh and five two two five okay 
let's see. I want to see why that in reverse. I open it up to transmutation and dynamic change. Okay, hopefully, this might not have a, uh, oh, the infinity is right after it, beyond measure. In reverse, this says, oh, this, okay, this is not a good time to attempt healing. The circumstances will not allow complete connection with spirit. So return to healing another time. Mm. All right. And look, and that's what I said, even patience. So that's why patience is there. So whomever, they're not fully connected at this time, right? The healing, I'm 5'2". Maybe they're that age, 52, uh, 11, 9, 119. Maybe it's dealing with a Capricorn or a Taurus person. Doesn't have to be. Maybe they're Scorpionic. 9, 10, 11. Ah, 7, 11. Even some Cancerian energy. Um, that, and I'm reading it in reverse because that's how it came out. So, oh, the seahorse is right here. This could have to do with a father energy, a father figure even, something like that. Doesn't have to be. Let's find out about the patience. See, maybe they're a patient. It says to come back for healing regarding something, right? Full healing. The circumstances will not allow a complete connection with spirit. Hmm. I'm courageous to stand up for myself. I'm seeing it as during this time, maybe in the past, right? And it could be this time too. Uh, things, because there's a good nostalgia there. But there's something that, uh, I'm just seeing it, something is out of alignment or something, right? And it's not the right timing. Okay, we're going to go to patience. And that's why there's needs a need for the patience. Okay. And that one is the beautiful mermaid oracle. Messages from the mermaids, Karen Kay and Linda Olson. Let's read patience. No way. Open up right to patience. Oh, you goodness, goodness. So sometimes I totally don't. So when it happens like that, uh, it's page nine, six, and nine, seven. The interesting thing is I'm going to tell you, I feel like the people that you need to have the patience with are the earth energies. <laughs> That's what's coming through. We got Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, potentially, maybe even Scorpio because they get very fixed even. Um, let me see. Nine, six, nine, seven. Practice patience. It's helpful to let go of any expectations and surrender to life as it reveals itself. The reward of patience is patience. Patience is a virtue. And then we also have this, you know, this Andean shaman. And, and it could be if you are an earth sign, maybe because Taurus are very patient. But I think you need to be patient with them. You understand? And same with Virgo or Capricorn. Um, they teach us patience because <laughs> they will take things really slow. And I think that's the thing of understanding. It's they're not ready. There's not a full connection. So, wow. This mermaid is being patient. She trusts in life and is in the process of allowing her path to unfold in the most perfect way. She knows the universe doesn't make mistakes. So she waits in the watery depths, knowing all is well and what is meant to be will be at the right time. Yes, she has wishes and dreams, hopes and fears, but she doesn't allow them to interfere with the unfolding of her life. And this part of her experience means being patient. Whatever it is you're hoping for, it's important to trust and practice patience at this time. You could try focusing on something else to distract your mind from any yearnings. Perhaps someone around you needs to be patient or maybe they're being impatient with you. If the latter is the case, you need to clearly and lovingly tell them you can't be rushed in this situation. And I have to bring forth now, and, and it doesn't have to be that there is, you know, a, a baby or anything like that. But, you know, there's patience. Um, you know, what I mean, like um, when you have to wait patiently, if the baby comes early, it's not OK. Right. And things like this with like pregnancy, it needs to be fully ready to come out into this world or to do this healing or whatever it is right i'm seeing they're a patient of you because we got patience you know what i mean what you have a whole bunch of patience or something and maybe this has to do because this is an orphan 
okay uh, the mother orphan okay that's all i'm saying doesn't have to be but they could be that somebody you know if you're dealing with a child that is you know adopted or something like that or that has been in some type of trauma or anything like that or um you know those are those are horrible issues <laughs> you know i mean those are scary things for children um that type of velocity and things like that that being patient with them that they will you know let them come to you as well you know like just keep it let them know that you're always there and they can you know and they will when they're ready i think that's what i'm seeing this with hmm Perhaps someone, right? Okay. And, or maybe someone else is trying to push you, right? Okay. If you're feeling impatient, okay, here we go. Let me go back. When you're able to practice patience, everything flows in a more natural and harmonious way. The pressure of expectations and hopes take a back seat, allowing peace and space to prevail. If you're feeling impatient, ask yourself why. Do you feel something will be taken away from you if whatever it is you're waiting for doesn't happen or appear quickly? If this is the case, know that what is meant for you won't pass you by. The simple explanation, when deeply and fully understood, should set your mind at rest. Wow. Um, interesting enough, with the four of pentacles right there, even, right? I did read the Merkabot out of the book, but I kind of gave you the idea of it. Um, but this is getting fairly long. But I'm just seeing, because sometimes this is could be holding on, right? And and I see this is holding on patiently, holding on, waiting. Um, wow. How interesting. And there's a lot of Taurus energy uh, and Earth energy. Maybe there's Aquarius or Gemini too. Um yeah but regardless it could be about your childhood but it's upright it's showing me really good nostalgia um and remembering things in a loving manner like being compassionate even someone being like a godmother or something like that and i'm bringing up the feminine energy because we have this mothering energy okay that's why um but over here like he he is very open too and welcoming and compassionate and loving. Oh my gosh, there's like this connection with them. Hmm. The only thing was this, this one, not, it's not, they're not ready. They can't be, they're not fully, whoever it is you're thinking of, they're, it's not the right timing for their healing because spirit cannot be completely connected in. That's, that's the final message. Um, wow. Thank you all so very much. This one was amazing. Um, I am fairly blown away. They've all been amazing. Um, I always like sharing. I, I mean, no one wants to share anything that's sad or anything, but that's the fact of the matter of life and processing. And we can't uh, repress or block. I don't think we should rep repress or block any emotions, even those that deem to be negative, okay? Um, Although you should not do your best not to, you know, harm another anything because of anger. So find a way to healthily, healthily get out any frustrations, you know, exercise or whatever, uh, sport activity, you know, it, the energy you need to still flow through it, writing it down, boxing, whatever, I don't know, just things for those, uh, Marsier, how about I call it that? Those Marsier type of emotions. All right, thank you all so much. I hope you've enjoyed and check out the other videos um, on my channel. Bye bye.